Are you searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World. Welcome back to another slice of pizza. I'm so excited for this episode because I think this is where it all began for me. This is the person that fed me pizza and nourished my faith and answered my questions and kept me on the straight and arrow. Um, she's an incredible woman and I'm super stoked to be joined by Ellen Hales. Ellen I don't think that you could say that I kept you on the straight and narrow, Zach. It was pretty hard. I think you did that. No. <laughs> I just, when you'd ask questions, I'd just point you in the direction, but you did all the work. No, but there were times when you rebuked me. <laughs> <laughs> in, like a, like in, in a loving way, you were like, like, what do you expect, Zach, and things like ah. that. And I'd be like, yeah, what, what do I expect? Like, do I yeah, expect things like to just change or do I need to do something about it? But we've sort of had a little bit to do with each other over the years. Like, what does life look like for you at the moment? Yeah, so now I'm in Lismore. Um, I'm working for the Diocese of Lismore. Um, life for me at the moment is, I don't know, I guess a lot. We've got um, just kind of pioneering some new things with youth ministry. Of course, like times change. And um, we didn't want to just do the same thing that's always been done. So we've been having some really robust discussions as a diocese on every level, um, education in the diocese. Um, in the parishes, the clergy, um, and everyone just kind of coming together, having these great conversations um, about what are the needs of young people and how can the church offer something to that. Um, And so for me, that's my heart, I guess. It's like I want to be where the need is. I don't want to just... Do stuff. Yeah, fill my time. Yeah. And so um, although I would say that it's really hard, and most of the time I think I'm just keeping busy. And um, so at the moment I'm working for the school's office, which I love. I've got such a great team of people there. Um, we run a whole bunch of different events and discipleship opportunities for young people. Mm. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of young adult stuff happening, so yeah. just really organic uh, things happening at my house, just dinner and yeah. um great discussions around scripture and and then I'm studying psychology at the moment too which is hectic um so just trying to fit it all in and I'm living with my youngest sister at the moment which is like just life-giving um I've got a really great household it It is her cardigan (laughs) I may have pulled this cardigan off the floor of her bedroom this morning does she know yeah of course she knows yeah cool good uh it's interesting to hear that you're still doing those grassroots organic things where you're just inviting people over for dinner because for me I think that's one of the things I remember most from from my time of I guess being discipled by you um, was that when we went to youth group on Sunday like it felt like you guys always made an effort when you I think when you started to have a team of other YMOs you know you would actually make meals like tacos or burgers or Tacos or burgers or pizza. Nachos. <laughs> Nachos was the go-to. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was at least it was better than like a snag on a barbie or, or pizza. Like as good as pizza is, it's quick and easy. Um, it does feel a little bit stale because someone else has made it. You kind of just picked it up from the shop. Whereas you guys put love and time and energy into this. Mm. But we we sat around and we actually shared a meal together. Um, what why was that so important for you? Why do you think sharing a meal with people is still so important? Well, I think. Um, there's something really special that happens over food. Mm. It, I think, well, it's a physical thing, yeah. you know, and your whole body is into it. You're, you're sitting around, um, you're balancing food. You've got something to, like, focus your mind on. Mm. And so if you're not really sociable, you can just focus on the food and let other people have the conversation around you. Um, and you can kind of just sit there and listen and no one. Definitely. Otherwise, if you don't have food and you're sitting there listening, like, yeah. it can look a little odd. But it's also um, like every human does it. Mm, Every human eats and we love food and it's um, nourishing. And I don't think it is 
oh, well, of course, it's not a mistake at all. It's 100% intentional that Christ came in the form of food, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the blessings of the bread and the wine all the way back from um, Melchizedek, you know, like that has been treasured and it's so important. Even the, the Passover celebration. Yeah, everything. It's all about food and nourishment and it's wholesome and, um, yeah, so, yeah, if you're doing youth ministry, um, yeah, never underestimate the power yeah, of a so, good meal. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it's often, you know, like, it's not in my testimony. I was, I think I was just desperate to find out whether God was real. But for a lot of people, they're like, why did you start finding out about God? It's like, oh, well, they had food at youth group. Like, that, that's actually a silly point. I've heard people say Yeah, all right. I, like, with Net, we hear missionaries come through all the time. And like they a lot had of them hot chips at lunchtime. We would do that hot actually. Chips, yeah. We'd have hot chips at lunchtime. Hot chips and lollies and But they knew what we were on about. I think yeah. that's that's the turning point is that you can offer food and they might come for food, but they know what you're on about. You mm. they know that you're the youth minister. They know that you talk about Jesus, that you have a faith, that you believe in something higher. Um and so even though they might say they're coming for food, I think deep down they're like I know that this person's going to talk about God mm. and I can just sit there and eat and pretend like I'm not interested. And that's like, you know, their defence yeah. in some way and maybe it's happening subconsciously. But I think when you share a meal with someone, you're you're quite vulnerable as well and, like, there's not really an elegant... Like you, you can try to eat food elegantly but there's it is kind of ugly and messy, like, yeah. especially if it is something like nachos or burgers, like the best nachos and the best burgers are the ones that, like, dribble and drop and mm. splash. Do you think that sets us up for, I guess, vulnerability and like our, our faith and like small group questions and, and being able to like actually open up about these big questions in life? Sounds like you've thought about this a lot more than I have. Okay. But I wanted to get another opinion. <laughs> um, meals. Yeah, I mean, of course. Mm. Like um, what is community but letting someone in, you know, mm. and that is vulnerability. It's being open, it's being who you are, it's having the courage to tell your whole story and just be. Um, and, yeah, I guess when you're eating, you let go of everything else. Mm. It's this is what I'm focusing on right now. I'm focusing on which bite I'm going to take next and which part of the burger looks the best mm. and um, if I'm going to eat that olive or not. And if someone asks me a question where I've got my mouth full, I've got to, like, you know, yeah. try to continue the conversation without looking like a grub. Yeah, yeah. I think what in so why we orientated youth group around the meal so we would come the first meal of course Mm. being mass we'd start at five o'clock and then we'd come down to the youth hub and we'd just gather around and one of the YMO's job was to so YMO being the youth minister leader um to cook the food Mm. and then we'd just sit around and I don't know if you realize this but we always had one question that we were asking everyone over dinner. Mm. So dinner was still very intentional. We weren't wasting the time just talking about life. I mean, of course, that's important too, but we'd ask a question that somehow linked to the rest of the night. Yeah. So say if it was about leadership, mm. we were talking about leadership, Christian leadership, Christ-like leadership, mm. we would maybe ask a question over dinner like, no, who's a role model in your life? Mm. And it might have happened really naturally in the conversation, mm. but we just start to get them thinking about where we're going next. And, yeah, over a meal or lollies, mm. it happens. People love being fed. Mm. It just kind of, it's like a gift. That's really what we wanted to make sure that the food was wholesome as well, that you were getting vegetables and although not everyone would eat their vegetables. No. I don't like veggies. Yeah. Um, I feel like my whole life I've asked you a lot of questions. Actually, on the show, I've asked a lot of people a question. What do you want to ask me? Um, why are you still doing what you're doing? Why are you still following Jesus after all mm. those years? Because somehow something we did at youth group triggered something in you and not everyone sticks around after youth mm. group. Young people will graduate from high school with no affiliation with the faith, but, yeah, they might have attended youth group in the parish once in a while or go to discipleship camps or ignite and all of those things but they might not stick with it like this what happened in you what decision did you make that meant after high school I'm going to keep going I'm going to keep going back to church I stuck around because when I found out that Jesus was real and then you had a plan for my life I 
in, I needed to share it with other people. I needed other people to know because it was so freeing and it was so liberating and it was, it was, it was life changing and it still is. And I just, I was like, everyone has to know this. And, and then it's, and then it all started being about what is the most effective way to get as many people to hear this as possible. So I've just been on a journey since then. I, the thing that I got from you guys, even when I was, you know, ministering alongside you, you had a level of prayer and a depth of prayer that I didn't have. And, you know, and I, I saw that that might have come from your experience with NET where you commit to an hour or two hours of prayer a day. And I was like, I need that. So I went and got that. And then while I was on NET, I was like, this is awesome. And then I found out that there was more. And then once I was working for the staff, I found that there was more. And so I've been studying theology. And now I realize that there is more. And there's more and more and more um, that I can learn about God. But I think at the end of the day, it comes back to like the relationships I've formed with people like yourselves. Like no matter how much I learn about God or about the best ways to, you know, form communion, the best ways to evangelize or whatever, I think at the end of the day, you were in the right place at the right time and you were open to the Holy Spirit and you just took me in on your wing. And mm. I want to do the same for Praise as many people. Jesus, hey. I think what it's I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, Zach, is, is, is that it's like the desire for more was your fuel, right? But I think at the core of that, you fell in love with God, right? Yeah. Um, that was my at orientation day. You might remember they get they get you to stand up and say why why you're here. And I was like, I want to fall in love with Jesus. Like that's yeah. what I wanted to get in my year on that. And um, yeah. I continue to re-fall in love with Jesus. Like The more, um, yeah, the more you learn about God, the more you learn you don't know anything about him. Mm. I think that's a great way to come to the faith, like, and to come to God. It's something happens in us along the way where we, we get to a point where maybe we're in a room of people and we might think we've got higher faith than everyone in the room and then all of a sudden we're containing God within our minds mm. And um, what we forget what, that God isn't the, the person like next to us that we're trying to like you know be more than. Or, yeah, or we forget that God is uncontainable. Mm. That there is always more to know about God. There's always more to learn about God, and God continually calls you to more. Mm. And I don't know about you, Zach, but that keeps me coming along to church. Mm. That keeps me orientated towards God because. There is nothing on this earth, no philosophical answer, no psychological path greater than serving God and knowing God. Like I just can't fathom anything greater than that. Like mm. there is, I'm quite an adventurous person and I want adventure. I remember thinking that back when I was, oh, I would have been like 11 years old climbing trees to find God in the clouds. Yeah. And it was the adventure, it was the calling, it was something greater, something higher. I wanted that. And it comes back to that question, like I was asking, like, is God real? Because if God is real, then that means that unlocked for me is everything. Yeah. You know, when you, God, when you give God your everything, you get everything in return, but God's everything is so much greater yeah. than our everything. And um, I would say that maybe that's why we keep coming mm -hmm. back is because we find answers in God, in the people around us that are so much better than the answers within ourselves. Mm. But then in saying that, I think I'll spend the rest of my life trying to understand why God's made a home in me and what does that mean? What does it mean for God to exist within me, mm. you know? I think on the journey, like, you, you, you hear a lot of answers that you don't like at first. And I think that was, like, at the start when I said, like, at times on the journey, like, you rebuked me. Because, like, there were, there were answers to questions that I didn't like that were contrary to what I'd grown up hearing and, and believing and, and living. Do you think that puts a lot of people off as well? I back? would say that, yeah, it definitely starts with relationship. Like, the only reason why I would say that I felt comfortable to say those things to you is because I got to know you. Mm. I knew what you were searching for. I knew what you loved, what you didn't like. Um, you know, you were coming along for a couple of years before you finished school and mm -hmm. set out on your own path and you get to a point after the relationship building where you you know your friends. Have you ever had a positive experience of it the other way around 
rebuking someone and then. I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I ever have. No, I have. I think like. And I think this is a tendency for a lot of us as young Catholics is I think I, I started to um, exp- I started to actually take on those teachings of the church that were quite difficult and I found a lot of freedom in them, like maybe the t- church teach around sexuality or like drugs and alcohol and I was like, oh, man, this is actually fantastic. And so I started to almost proclaim not doing drugs and not having sex. I started preaching that. Mm. Um, but people just felt rather condemned by you know and I just came to realize that yeah I, I in my opinion I don't think I've been able to ever effectively um, introduce someone to Jesus by talking about the rules first or the the difficult questions you know have you had any experience like you said you haven't been able to do it but or you've never tried but have you seen it happen sure sure you've seen it happen you can think about even our parents generation mm. and down through the ages I think we've had that type of preaching mm. um, given to us, but it, rub, it almost rubs me out the wrong way whenever someone does it. Yeah, and even like as you're doing that gesture, I'm just thinking of you know iron sharpens iron, mm. and so the reason why I'd be able to sharpen you and you'd be able to sharpen me I'm and we'd be able to have those same. really vulnerable mm. conversations is that yeah we're we're on the same level. Like I know where you're at. Mm. I'm not gonna condemn you if I don't know where you're at because I want the absolute best for you Mm. you know I want it's like that um if you do not have love then you are a clanging symbol gong gong, whatever it is you know like um so if you don't love the person first then what Mm. gives you the right to condemn them well some would argue that loving them is is to tell them what's what's wrong and what's right of course I can see that too if you could give me one more encouragement to keep going in my faith, what would it be? I think it's, so I believe that Jesus came to earth Mm. and I believe that he died on the cross. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that the Holy Spirit is here with us and, and that changes my life and it continually calls me for more. So I guess what I would say to you is how do you live that belief? How do you live? as though Jesus is alive. Like, does it change your life? Like, are you alive? Are you living in Jesus' resurrection? There's just so many things that we miss Mm. every day. Like, I'm just, you know, I miss, you know, the connection that my sister needs. I miss um, just the conversation that my friends need. Mm. I miss what God is doing in my life. And just to just to desire that, to, to move forward, to be more, to offer the church your whole self, um, to make moves that are radical, that to be a missionary outside of yourself, mm. not for yourself but for others. Like the, Australia needs solid missionaries and if we're worried about young people who aren't coming to church, then let's make it something for them. Let's, let's actually be the mission that we want for them, you know. Let's mm. live the life that we want for them yeah. and then just be willing to hear their stories and walk alongside them. Like, I don't want to do it by myself. Mm. You know, I I want to know that I've got a church behind me that is going to support me as a young adult who is willing to lay down my life for this mission. Mm. Like, I want a church like that. Yeah. Yeah. More than, like, more than what we have. Like, let let us be outward focusing I, I, want the other. See, I want to see a church that's like what, what I've exp- I want everyone to experience the beautiful relationship that I've been able to experience with you. And I hope we can be more missionary and we can go out and we can make those. Because you just did. You just went out and you met me or I met you. It was this weird interaction. But somehow we ended up there and now we're here. Yeah. Um, and that's a good encouragement for everyone else out there. Yeah. yeah. Get out, do something, talk to your priest, say, is there something I can do? That's all you did. Go off, do missions somewhere else, come home with your gifts and experiences and just do something. Yeah, it starts with you genuinely wanting the best for the other. So get into that headset and then go out. What does this person need? Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Ellen. Seriously, it's great. I'm really keen to see what, you know, how people go out from here. Yeah. I'm keen to see how we go out from here. It's always yeah. a challenge. Thanks, guys.
A lot of talk in our church today about the new evangelization. And we might ask, well, what's new about the new evangelization? One thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be Catholic, should already be Christian. Individuals, families, communities, whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel. And so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith, of evangelization. Another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that. And the new media and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today.